Today we're heading to Standard to breach the multiverse. Hello everyone, it's Seth, probably better known as Saffron Olive, and it's time for another edition of Against the Odds. So last week on our Against Odds poll, it was Breach the Multiverse coming in first place, so today we're heading to Standard to not just cast to Breach the Multiverse, we're going to see how many Breach the Multiverses we can cast in a single turn. Hopefully, when everything works out, we will mill all of everyone's decks and then just pass the turn back to our opponent and they'll die to drawing on an empty library. So let's talk about what our deck's trying to do. Jump into some game seated action. So we're built around Breach the Multiverse. Seven mana, each player mills 10. Then we get to reanimate a creature planeswalker from each player's graveyard. So the idea of our deck is we're not just playing this fairly. Like you could just play Breach and reanimate a couple things and trust that you're getting good value. We're going deep on Breach the Multiverse. So our main plan is to try to copy Breach the Multiverse with Chandra Hope's Beacon and also Sea Double. Chandra, absurd with Breach because it's good if we play it pre-Breach because we can copy Breach with its static ability. And then it's also fine as we're breaching, we can reanimate a Chandra and use this removal or use its static ability later. Sea Double can copy Breach, can also copy other things. And it works really well with our main reanimation target, which is a tally. So as we breach the multiverse, hopefully multiple times because of Chandra, hopefully we hit a tally, which is going to give us free spells off our deck and our opponent's deck. This means we can hit another breach the multiverse, or we can hit a C double to copy a tally and repeat the process. We can hit a Chandra and then copy another breach the multiverse in the future because it's a new Chandra and we can use its static ability again. So that's the main idea of this deck. And it's going to be hard to describe, but once you see it in action, it is is ridiculously awesome. We also got Shieldred because Breach the Multiverse works really well with it. We mill our opponent enough that we can immediately flip Shieldred. So that's kind of our backup reanimation plan. The other thing we need to do for this to work is fill graveyards. Uh, so we have Fable the Mirror Maker, Big Score, probably our two most important cards. Our curve is really high. Fable and Big Score give us treasures to ramp into Breach the Multiverse while also just filtering through our deck to find our big payoffs. So we got a Rona for some looting. Blood Death Harvester can be removal or fill the graveyard with blood tokens, Invasion of Omicat can also kind of be a combo piece. Sometimes we flip it and get an Itali from the graveyard or whatever, but fills the graveyard as well. Otherwise, we got some removal to help stay alive as we're setting up these ridiculous combo turns. Mana base, pretty typical standard stuff. In the sideboard, a bunch of discard encounters for control, a bunch of removal and a tox roll as a reanimation target for aggro. And that is Breach the Multiverse combo for standard. That's our against the odds deck for this week. So let's jump into some games and see just how many breaches we could cast in a single turn. Thanks for watching, everyone. I hope you enjoy it, and I'll be back in a bit for the wrap-up. Need some March of the Machines cards? Well, you can get them from our sponsor, Card Kingdom, over at cardkingdom.com slash mtggoldfish. Against the odds time, we are doing some reanimator mill combo shenanigans. Ah, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll keep this. We are a... Uh, Breaching the multiverse, beholding the multiverse, doing doing something to the multiverse to reanimate stuff. Uh, hopefully we draw land. Aha, that is a land. All right, well, land go. Fables can churn us through the deck. Opponent invasion of Amagat. What's in the graveyards? Nothing and nothing really. You know what? Let's just discard this Nahiri's, Nahiri's Warcrafting, I think. Opponent gets to draw. We untap Black Cleave Cliffs and... Fable of the Mia Breaker. Okay, well, we got the C double, which is good if our opponent starts casting big stuff at some point. Invasion of Zendika. Ooh. We are definitely going to leave this C double up next turn. <laughs> definitely. Opponent grabs some lands. Well, we're going to discard Blood Tithe Harvester. Yeah, just Blood Tithe. That's fine. Discard the Blood Tithe. Draw a big score. Go to combat. Get in. Hit you. Make a treasure. And let's see what our opponent does. Let's see if our opponent gives us something good to copy with this C-double opponent. Land. Yeah, we kind of want one of those. Copy target spell. Invoke to spare you. <laughs> I do love invoke to... I do love uh, <laughs> C-double. That was pretty... That was pretty good. Next turn, we can multiverse. Oh, do we just play Chandra and Hope? It could go wrong. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh, if they kill the Chandra, it's pretty bad. 
Yeah, I think we wait for now. Let's just play a fable. Opponent, forest. Halo Forger, going to cast another Invoke Despair. Well, the bad news for our opponent, after all this, is we get to untap and... Oh, I really would like the Chandra on the battlefield. We could just malt, breach the multiverse. It's so spectacular if we get Chandra out. You know what? We came here to breach the multiverse. Let's breach the multiverse. Let's see what we can find. Our graveyard, we get a Blood Tithe Harvester. Opponent's graveyard. Sheldred seems fine. Yeah, that's that's fine. Not like a absurd breach the multiverse, because we kind of whiffed on our deck, but uh, our opponent needs to deal with the Sheldred or we flip it, and that would probably be bad for our opponent. Even more Invoke Despairs. Wow, they've drawn a lot of Invoke Despairs. Trying to invoke their way through this game, please. It arcs like Shores. Invasion of, wow, we get to flip it. Invasion of Amonkhet. Chandra. One, two, three, four, well, yeah. Transform Shieldred. Wait! Oh no! We learned something. <laughs> wow! Public service announcement. Don't flip your opponent's Praetors. That's, that's bad news, apparently. Oh, I guess we should have read the card. That did not go exactly how we had planned. Not quite. Uh, all right, let's bring in, I guess, a couple of counters, run it like that. One thing that's weird is how transform cards in Magic all work in different ways. Like, some of them you can transform perfectly fine. Others, if you have your opponent's transform card, you can't transform at all. The new Praetors are apparently in the do not transform or your opponent gets them category. Good to know, good to know. Yeah, all right, we'll try this. Oh, we were, like, pretty far ahead, too, I think. Even though our opponent gets three... Ridiculous. Three ridiculous, um, Invoke Despairs. Deep Root Wayfinder. Damage to a player, surveil one, then you can return a land. Well, yeah, sadly, I think we just have to kill that. We don't have a blocker, so we can't really let our opponent just go off. That would be bad. It would be nice to get this Rona down. I'm assuming our opponent's playing... Oh, render inert. Okay, going to remove the counters from our bank buster. Well, we draw land. Yeah, let's play Rona. Pass the turn. Invasion of Amangat. Well, we'll discard the Itali. Pona gets to draw, looking for a land. Finds one. Well, we also hit a land, so play the land and pass the turn. Passing. Well, all right, we will loot. I guess just the land, unfortunately. Untap. Oh, more tallies. Uh, all right, we will loot. Discard and a tally. Play a land. Where's our reanimation? Opponent looking at our Rona. Going to kill our Rona. Mm-hmm. Passes. Well, all right, Xander's Lounge. Go. Invoke Despair. Well, all right, let's try this again. Invoke Despair. Alright, so opponent, gonna draw a few cards. Yeah, Invoke Despair is annoying. Kinda hate that card. Well, good news is we do get to play Natali. Let's see what we spin into. Hopefully good things. Well, okay, we get our own Invoke Despair, and also a big score. That's pretty decent. Discard the land. Alright, our, our turn to do things. Hit ya, hit ya, hit ya. Crew. Hit ya. Opponents at eight, and uh, well, we might be overcoming the Invoke Despair. We will see. Do they have another one? Wow, scoops it up. Haymakers are flying all over the place. All right, Brotherhood end down. C double's really good if it doesn't get countered. Maybe another negate? The Duresses could also be good. At least we didn't flip our opponents uh, shielded for them that game. That was, a, that was a step in the right direction. A small step in the right direction. Oh, I still can't believe we did that. I blame you, chat. I blame you. Oh, that sounds fine. We got a Fable the Mirror Breaker, so how bad? How bad can it be? Opponent, Schwamp, and Tenacious Underdog. Well, we will play an island. We will pass the turn. We might kill this underdog. Opponent plays a land, goes to combat. Uh, attacks. Yeah, let's let's kill it. Kill the underdog. Opponent passes. Well, play land and yeah, let's just invasion Amicat. 
Ooh, resolves. Was not expecting it to just resolve, but we will take it. Mill our opponent a bit. We get to draw a card. They discard a card. About it. Wow. All right. Just an underdog. Sure. We draw a C double. Yeah, let's just play the land in. Oh, they do have counters. Let's pass for now. Let's pass. Yeah, let's let's copy it. About it. Well, play the land. Fable the Mirror Breaker. Make a goblin. I guess if our opponent has double removal spell, okay, they kill the goblin. If they have two removal spells, they can try to get a hit, but they don't have a land in the graveyard currently. They need, they would have to surveil the land into the graveyard. Opponent combat passes. Well, do we even just, wow, opponent scoops it up. Apparently when we don't flip our opponent's shoulder for them, uh, <laughs> the matchup goes pretty well. We're not gonna do that for the rest of the video, I promise, I promise, we won't do that again. Uh, against the odds time. We are trying to breach the multiverse. Ooh, okay, I actually kinda like this hand. Our first hand was pretty sketchy. This one though, this one has some potential. All right, let's 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 try it. We are on the mulligan. There's a world where we just like, big score into breach, or maybe even a better world where we like, big score into Chandra into breach, and then we're just like going off. See how fast of a start our opponent gets, oh no, opponent, Ponerino. Well, okay, uh, Fable, don't scoop, don't scoop. No scooping, no scooping, no scooping. Come on, you can do it, you can do it. This, oh. All right, we needed our opponent's hand to be a little better. <laughs> our opponent's hand was so bad, they scooped before we could do cool things. Kind of funny to root for your opponent to have a better hand, but I think I think we needed our opponent to have a slightly better hand that game. All right, do a little trimming, bring in a couple of uh, pylons, run it like that. We are on the draw. All right, opponent, you can do it. You can do it, opponent. I mean, we'll keep this. We might get to see the the pylon power of being able. Oh, there's the breach. The pylon power of being able to like blood tithe on two into convoke out pylon on three if we need to. Well, let's play the Blood Drive, Havista. Oh, you gotta make that land drop, okay. Miglaz Maze Crusher. Well, uh, play the land, and yeah, we're just gonna pile on this Miglaz here. You know what, let's keep one of them. Let's keep one of them. Our hand is like ridiculously expensive. Plaza of Heroes in Miglaz Part Two. All right, well, uh, play the land. Oh, we might get crushed. <laughs> Another land. Arlen, ooh, okay. Well, do we even, do we even live until we cast a seven drop? We might not. Yeah, it's in. I think we actually have to, yeah, I think we have to loot here. Discard an Atali, draw a card. See if we can hit a removal spell or, oh boy, another land. Oh, that's not what we were looking for. Oh, even more land. Okay, uh, Cycle Xander's Lounge. A show of strength with the main phase cycling. Not looking good, not looking good. Chandra. I mean, we're gonna take attack the Arlen, but I think we're just literally dead here. Because our opponent, they get to block and then this Arlen flips and they hit us for 11. Yeah, we just, we need to do something a little earlier. A lot of, a lot of lands. We got off to a good start, but then nothing to, nothing to follow it up. Yeah, pumps their dork. Sure, 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 sure. You know what? Let's bring in a Toxrill. This feels like a Toxrill matchup. Uh, run it like that. All right, we're on the play for game number three, which is good. I'm still a little salty our opponent's scoop game one. We were, that was like a, basically a nut draw, but we didn't get to see it because our opponent scooped. Well, I mean, we're gonna keep this. We do need one more land in our first two turns, basically. A land gets us to Fable, gets us to big score, and then Oh no, that's that's not a land. Uh oh. This feels like the kind of turn where we draw Xander's Lounge and cry, opponent. Hajar. We asked for a land and our deck gave us a seven drop and a six drop. Uh, actually, literally the opposite of a land. As far away from being a mana source as, as a card can be. Yeah, well, fair enough. <laughs> Game one, our opponent didn't play Magic. Game three, we didn't play Magic. In between, I guess we kind of played a little Magic, but that was a that was a weird match. Well, next time, next time, cool things. Sounds good if we get to the big scores. It is risky. <sighs> We're gonna mulligan it.
This is, I guess, I guess better. We got the breach. We got a two drop. We've seen with this deck, the biggest risk is keeping hands full of expensive cards and just never casting them. When we cast our spells, this deck does absurd things, but we don't always cast our spells. Oh, uh, Storm Carve goes, go about it. Schwamp. Uh, Dark Slug Shores. And Blood Tithe Harvesta. Hopefully this Fable, like, if we get to this Breach, we probably win opponent. Lily out of the Veil. Gonna kill the Harvester, sure. Ooh, double Fable. Well, Shivan Reef and Fable the Mirror Breaker. Oh, we really want these treasures. Hopefully this Goblin lives. Like, treasures get us to Breach pretty quickly, and Breach makes us win usually. It's either Fable or Warcrafting, I think. I'm honestly not sure which is better fable like if they kill the goblin we need the warcrafting to kill the liana or else they're gonna make us discard the breach most likely right her bank buster oh all right well if the goblin gets to kill liana then that's that's good news yeah we'll just keep our hand come on hold who all right liliana down uh well blood tithe harvester one two three four so we're up to five mana I mean, I guess there's a world where Goblin lives, six mana, we draw an untapped land, seven mana, we just breach next turn. Opponent gonna draw with the bank buster. Uh, let's see what our opponent has. Ooh, the main phase. The main phase bank buster draw. Always a sign of strength. And, wow, more bank, okay. This Goblin's gonna live, isn't it? Untapped land, please, magic gods. Actually, we can, yeah, let's discard the Warcrafting. That's better. This gives us more shots at hitting a land. Oh, I don't want to discard the Breach. C double. All right. We're going to have to wait one more turn. Get in, hit you. Down to 14. Six mana. Ooh, Eternal Wander. I think we want one of those. Yes. Let's, uh, let's C double Eternal Wander. Opponent. What do they do with Eternal Wander is the real question. Our opponent's actually just like in pretty rough shape, I think. Uh, C double's actually like actually super powerful. I mean, they almost have to tick down, right? They can't just let the reflection go off. All right, opponent is going to negative four. We keep the Harvester. All right, can we draw a land? Ooh, okay. And I think it's happy fun time. Breach the Multiverse. Spin it to win it. Ooh, we hit an Itali for sure. Our deck, let's see, opponent's deck. Gix, I guess. Well, actually, maybe Mentor's better. Let's take Mentor and take Itali. And then, I mean, we can use our opponent. Oh my goodness, Invasion of Gabacon. And a Brothers would end to kill the Magbusters. Oh, and a million triggers. And then we can Itali the, or blink the Itali to do it again. Yeah, opponent. Done, diddly done. That wasn't even like the biggest combo breach or anything. It was just like, a breach is just so much value. It is so much value. Uh, all right, bring in some counters. And I guess just run it like that. We are on the draw for game number two. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. I mean, got a bit of defense. Ooh, there's a breach. Oh, now the sand is great. I mean, our opponent probably has discard now. It's Assuming they have dresses in their sideboard. Pony, shwamp. Passes. Atali is not bad to discard to this big score. We have a pathway to a pretty quick breach to the multiverse. Yeah, Black Cleave Cliffs, go. And, uh, I don't even know if we need to counter this, but I guess we might as well. Oh, another breach. All right, no, no, no discard here. We really want this big score. Like, Big Scorn to Breach is exactly what we need. Maybe we should have let the sword live and save the negate for invasion of Gabagon. That's gonna slow us down. I assume they have to take Big Score. Like, Big Score is super good here. So there goes a the Big Score. That is gonna slow us down. And a Lion Sash. Ooh, another attack. Boy, we were drawing all the expensive stuff. Oh, yeah, we might have been too greedy with that negate. Maybe we just let him sword and then try to protect from discard. Now we're actually in pretty rough shape. Maybe we can get some value out of the C-double, depending on what our opponent casts. Like, we will C-double basically anything at this point. <laughs> just, to, just to do something this turn. And then we need two more lands to get to the big score. Or three to get to our incredibly seven drop heavy hand. Just mirror access. That's fine. We 
we will accept that. Bone at Lion's Ash. They could flip it, right? If they eat multiple things. Eh. Well, actually, no. They they only can eat permanence, right? Or only can grow with permanence. I don't even know. Yeah, we're gonna copy the gigs. Not great, but better than doing nothing. Slightly. It gives us another. Oh, no, that's another seven. I mean, if we ever get the mana, we have the most powerful hand in standard, but come on, another big score. Another big score, please. Fable of the Mirror Breaker, okay. Well, I mean, that could make mana or loot us to mana, lands. I guess Invoke Despair is kind of a blowout because then we don't get to loot opponent. Living up to its name. Well, yeah, I guess we sack Gix and then we have to sack the Fable. Yeah, when we don't get to make treasures, our deck is very expensive. So opponent can flip Gobicon. We do get to make a treasure with the Goblin by the looks. Oh, we really needed that filtering. Well, all right. Opponent flips the Gobicon. Yeah, it gets a counter. We draw, okay, Xander's Lounge. That's a, that is a land. That is technically a land. Get in with the Goblin. I mean, I guess this means worst case, we can big score. Best case, we just draw one more land or get in one more goblin attack. Oh, another invoke despair. Okay, so we dropped a, th oh yeah, we're actually, well now we have to draw land, I think, or we die. Opponent hits us, still not using their lion slash. I'm surprised they're not growing that. Opponent draws and draws. Land off the top and we might be good. Opponent grows the dorks. Yeah, now we're just literally dead on board. We did a really good job of drawing our seven drops that game. Actually, I think we should have not negated the sword, I guess, and just held on to the negate to try to protect the big score. I think if we had done that, we would have won. So I guess that's really on us. I mean, sword, sword is scary in name, but I haven't seen a sword be good in many years in standard. I'm talking like a decade. It's been it's been since like Callblade era. Since swords, ooh, okay. Well, this hand we love. We have literally no finishers, but we can make a lot of mana, and our deck is full of seven drops, as we learned last game. So we will find our we will find our big things eventually. I would take this hand pretty much pretty much every game. Opponent planes, invasion of Gabagon. Thankfully, we have some redundancy, so we still get a fable. Play the land, play the fable, make a Gabu. Shattered Shanktum and okay, more Gobbaconning. All right, they take the sea double, sure. I mean, we still get to big score, assuming this goblin gets to attack. Nahiri's Warcrafting, yeah, we'll pitch. Well, do we pitch a big score? We pitch Warcrafting. Maybe we hold on to both of them. Big score is like really good. Pitch the land, pitch the big score, that works. Hit you with the goblin. Big score here. Like, big score, end step, discard blood tithe, and hope we hit a seven drop. Sarah Paragon. Well, here we go. Pitch a blood tithe. Show us the breach. Show us the breach. All right, that's a breach and another big score. Well, time to spin it to win it. Time to spin it to win it. Yes, we will play the Xander's Lounge, and we will breach the multiverse. Let's see what we hit. Uh, so from our deck, opponent's deck we get Mentor, our deck we get, eh, let's say Shieldred. Getting rid of the Sierra, Sierra Paragon seems good. Hit you with the Goblin. Probably game, right? Unless our opponent has a Wrath or something. We kind of went soft and didn't take the Tally. Maybe we should have just taken the Tally. But we did just fill our opponent's graveyard, so Sierra Paragon's actually really very, very nice when <laughs> your opponent mills you for 10. So I think it was worth it. Should we flip it? That's a real question. 10 cards in the graveyard. We, we can flip it. We can flip it next turn. There might be puns, but at least we learn from them. At least we learn from our, our mistakes sometimes on occasion. All right, opponent's gonna kill the shield. I don't think our opponent realized how that would work. They kill the shieldred, which the shieldred actually, I guess it's our biggest creature still, but it's actually just a four six. Oh my God, another breach. Oh, we get to do this again. Hit ya. I think our opponent was afraid we were gonna flip it. These invasion of Gobicons have not actually saved our opponent. Breach the multiverse, trigger prowess, spin it to win it, and what do we get this time? Uh, eh, Sarah Paragon. Seems good for our deck too, and an Itali. All right, Itali. What is Itali? And opponent. Done, 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 done. We're about to hit a Chandra there too, so who knows what would happen. But yeah, that was a <laughs> that was pretty good. And we managed to avoid flipping our opponent's shieldred, so double, double win. Got him. <laughs> Sweet. Yeah, Sam. 
sand looks decent. It looks decent. Opponent. Oh, that's another. That is another Itali. I mean, we do need lands in Therese Elvar. Okay, so we need a land. We definitely need a land. And we need to get down like Fables and Big Scores to ramp into Breach. I guess worst case, we can use the blood to dig if we just draw nothing. Wedding announcement. Land. All right, that's definitely not a land. Uh, discard an Itali. Okay, that is a land. We're not making this look easy, but we did hit a land. That was that was step one. Opponent. Shield Rid. And cruise it up and goes attacking. Yeah, it would have been a lot better if we could have done other things last turn. Opponent. Well, we do draw land, which is good. So play the land. Let's pass. We got to be greedy. Shield Rid. Yeah, Shieldred's so brutal against our deck. Blue Sun's Twilight. All right, yep. Well, I mean, I guess we're just copy Shieldred, try to stay alive, is the, the current plan. Opponent Cruise. Well, we will C-double the Shieldred. Kill the Bank Buster. Drop to seven. Uh, we don't really have a follow-up, though. Big score. Discarded tally. Yeah, we're going to be a turn short, I think. Discarded tally. Oh, draw two lands. Yeah. Trigger, trigger, trigger. We need a one more. T that one turn. That one turn that we had to take off to, uh, to hit our lands kind of did us in. Well, negate in. Duress in. Pylon in. Actually, maybe Toxrel in. Bankbusters may be in. Go down one Itali. Go down one C-double in this matchup. Probably the Brothers would end. I guess the Rona, unfortunately. Couple of Blood Tithe Harvesters, one of Asianomica. Run it like that? That is the thing about Breach the Multiverse. It is a lot of mana. We have plans for getting to it, but if our opponent can get down Shieldred to prevent us from being able to draw cards and make treasures with a big score, then things become tough. We get to play first. Well, not keeping the one lander. I guess we're keeping the two lander. Keep the two lander and pray to the magic gods. <laughs> I mean, we can't go to five. Five is a, is a death sentence in magic. Opponent. Land, well, we will Dark Slick Shores in Blood Tithe Havista. I mean, we got Chandra in to breach the multiverse. Should we be able to get to opponent? Passes. Well, I mean, go to combat. Hit you with Blood Tithe Harvester. Play the land. Dress you. Wow. All right. Opponent really wants that uh, wedding announcement, I guess. Something. Probably wedding announcement. Passes. Well, play the land. Go to combat. Hit you. Pass the turn. Opponent land. Reckoner bank buster. Passes. Well, play the land. I wonder if our opponent's ever going to tap out or if they're just going to leave up counters the whole game. That might be the plan. Opponent draws with bank. I mean, they are down to 10. So I guess sooner or later, they're going to have to do something. Opponent passes. Well, play the land. Go to combat. Attack ya. Yeah, play Chandra. I'm sure it's getting countered, but... Opponent. Counter number two. And I guess our opponent is like a full-on control deck. Opponent untaps. Plays a land. Shieldred. Well, we draw. Fable the Mirror Breaker. Oh, jeez. Oh, my God. Okay. Opponent. A firm believer in counter spells. Oh, dear. Counter number three. All the counters in the world are going to make it hard to do fun things. That is that is also true. Opponent draws a card, triggers Shieldred, makes a dork. I have zero faith in us being able to resolve a Behold the Multiverse. Zero. All right, we get drained. Opponent untaps. Shieldred. There goes our Blood Tithe Harvester. Gonna crew the Bank Buster. I mean, we're pretty dead if, I mean, we are literally dead if our opponent has counter number four. We did what we could, but geez, that's a lot of count. We even had the dress. Our opponent just countered literally everything. Boom, discard. Wait, they really do? Oh no. Okay, that's another counter. Well, we need to draw an untap land. Counter number four. All right, we got to draw an untap land. That is, that is it. That is all. That is, that is everything. Do we draw an untap land? If we do, we have some chance. We do not. Cram. Well, next time. 
combo off with Breach the Multiverse in Standard, and uh, we got the Chandra. Our dream world is Chandra into Double Breach into, if we get to Double Breach, we might be able to just like mill our opponent's entire deck. That's that's one of the goals, that's one of the goals. Well, Xander's Lounge, go. Let's see what our opponent's up to. The downside of this hand is it's not swift, that's for sure. Tap land, go. Blood Tithe Harvester's not bad, at least that's something we can do a little bit earlier in the game. Opponent plays a Blood Tithe Harvester. Well, we will play a Blood Tithe Harvester and a Xander's Lounge go. Do we have a Fable of the Mirror Breaker? Yeah, I guess we'll just trade. Sure. Opponent, Fable of the Mirror Breaker. Well, unfortunately, since our opponent fabled, we gotta kill the Goblin, we gotta take the land, play the land, pass the turn. Also gotta be aware of counters against this deck. Our opponent is a deck that would have counters for days. Tough decisions in Grixis Phil. Opponent disguides. Wow, removal and an invasion of Amagat. They must need lands. Corpse Appraiser. Yeah, this definitely feels like an opponent who's kind of desperate for lands. All right, gets to draw a card. Sure, sure, sure. Finds their land, I'm sure. Passes. Well, we will play the land. Fable of the Mirror Breaker. Well, can we get down to Chandra? That's step one. Opponent. Ooh, hits another land, okay. Fable of the Mirror Breaker. And Blood Tithe Harvester. All right, well, we untap. We discard a land. We draw a card. It's a land. We play the land. We play a Chandra. We tick down Chandra. Kill the Fable. Kill the Goblin. Go attacking, make a treasure. We need a Breach. Oh, opponent's gonna block, interesting. All right, opponent blocks. Pass the turn. Double fable. Opponent discards the breach of the multiverse, okay. Yep. Hideous Yugu in Kiri. Gonna draw some cards. Try to set up the Hideous Yugu and Seri combo kill, which probably will work. Well, it'll depend on what's on the top of our opponent's deck, I guess. Like, we get to Chandra and double big score. We really wanna breach, though. Breach would be the best. Oh, opponent plays a land. Passes, Rona. Well, we flip our Saga. So play a land, play a Chandra. Take up Chandra for mana. Big score. Discard the Rona. Draw four. Pass the turn. Opponent untaps, draws, flips the saga. Question is, how did our opponent stack their deck with this Hidesugu and Kiri? That's the that's the scary thing. We can kill it, but do we even want to kill it? I mean, I guess we have double go for the throw. Oh, I wish we had a breach. Breach would be so incredible here. Looking at their blood tokens, are they thinking about discarding something? Maybe they're going like Cruelty of Grix Atroxa? All right, discards a Blood Tithe Harvester, draws a card, sure. Well, now it should be a, a blind card on the top of the deck, right? They've drawn two. Attack Chandra, attack Chandra. Go for the throat. The Corpse Appraiser. It'll trigger Chandra. We'll kill the Reflections. We're gonna let the Hidesugu and Kiri live for now. So kill them both. Chandra down but not out. Oh, come on, Breach. What do you got? She Oldred, sure. And opponent passes. We draw, we get drained. Tick up Chandra, see if we can hit a Breach. That was literally five lands. All right, well, Itali then. Yeah, that is kind of the low roll. All right, Itali, show us some action. Ah, oh, it's a Breach, it's a Breach. All right, Invasion, uh, actually Breach first. Invasion, oh, this is gonna be good. This is gonna be good. We get double Breach because we got the Chandra. Oh my God, this is gonna be good. Do we get to mill the entire deck? Do we do it? Okay, we will take a new Chandra. Opponent's Graveyard. Oh, they have Chandra too. Hang on. Our Graveyard, Itali. Opponent's Graveyard, new Chandra. Keep the new one. Keep an Itali. Itali triggers. We get Corpse Appraiser and also Itali. Do it again. Do it again. Not over yet. Uh, we'll keep an Itali. Itali. Can we find one more Breach? Okay, not yet. So we Chandra, C double. Oh my god. Wait. Oh my goodness, okay. Copy, oh my God, this is absurd. Chandra triggers, oh my goodness, we did it. We pulled it off. C-Double gets to copy the breach that's still on the stack.
Oh no, do we fizzle it? Do we mess this up? Okay, a tally triggers. Now here he's Warcrafting. Go for the throat. Oh, this is ridiculous. This is ridiculous. We're doing it. We're actually doing it. Behold the multiverse resolves. Mill, 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 mill. Take another Itali. And from opponent's graveyard, Jace the Perfected Mind. I don't think we need it though. Keep an Itali. Itali triggers. How many cards we got left? Nine? Decline. We don't want either of those. There's still another breach on the stack. Keep the new Chandra that hasn't triggered yet. Corpse Appraiser, not taking a card. Invasion Resolves. Okay, we still got a Breach. We still got a Breach. This does it. This is actually going to do it. And then Breach, mill the rest of the decks. Doesn't matter. Chandra and uh, Shieldred. We did it. Wow, we pulled off the combo. All right, we don't even need to do anything. We will pass the turn. Opponent's deck is empty. And that is how C-Double can interact with this deck. My God. Did you see that stack? I don't know if I've ever seen a stack like that in standard. Not in March of the Machine standard, at least. Like, that was so sweet. In case you didn't actually understand what was going on there, we hit the reach of the multiverses. We kept hitting Chandra's to double new spells. Keeping the new Chandra's lets us copy a new spell. So we ended up in a position where we had a new new Chandra, a breach on the stack, and we're able to see double to copy the breach and to also copy an Itali. We milled our opponent's entire deck in one turn and built the most absurd board. Oh my God, that was awesome. Our opponent, I think, is trying to pull off the, the Hitasugu combo. How do we how do we stop the Hitasugu combo? Can we stop the uh, Bankbuster seems good. I guess Disdainful Stroke seems good. Negate is probably fine. Duresses would also be fine. Pylon, maybe. I mean, I guess these are the cards we're interested in. I don't think we can bring in all of them or else we just kill our combo. We can cut probably Brotherhood End. Maybe we trim the Invasion Warcrafting. Warcrafting does kill a... Does kill a Shieldred, though, which is relevant. Oh, we just... We don't have room. Oh, no, the clock is on. Uh, We don't have room for all this. We just don't have room. Yeah, maybe we gotta go, like, go down the Rona... Oh, geez. All right, something like that. <laughs> not super, not super comfortable with that sideboard plan, but eh. A lot of cards to bring in, not a lot of cards to take out without ruining the combo. Oh, my goodness. That was even more spectacular than when I drew it up in my head. I didn't really think through the the possibility of doubling C doubles with things on the stack. That's usually not something that happens. It's possible. We proved that it is possible. Yeah, sounds okay. Hopefully, our opponent's not off to too aggro of a start. We have some removal though. Opponent passes. Big score is not bad for the future. We got a disdainful stroke, which is also nice. Siphon insight. Mm-hmm. Stealing something from our deck. Opponent plays a land. Fable of the mirror breaker. Yeah, that's not good for us. That's not good at all. Okay, this uh this might be a problem. Pony. Unchecked Fable of the Mirror Breaker. About it. Gonna discard some cards. Discards a Jace. Gets in, gets to make some mana. Hits us. I mean, we will Disdainful Stroke probably anything here. Just to not fall too far behind. I guess if it's a creature, we can pile on. Opponent plays a land. Jace. Well, uh, yeah. We are definitely going to... Definitely going to Disdainful Stroke that. Well, untap... Pile on the goblin. Yeah, I guess we'll keep both of those. All right. Opponent flips a fable of the mirror breaker. What do we got? Opponent's going to siphon insight to steal our sweet guards. Yeah, it's actually super obnoxious. So I assume they take the Itali. Itali's pretty busted. Oh, we're going to lose to our own cards. I mean, I guess, does that count as a win? If we lose to our opponent casting our own cards, does that, does that count as a win? Opponent's really tanking on this decision. Okay, opponent passes we draw basically nothing so xander's lounge so i guess our hope is if our opponent tallies we big score breach and just hope for the best opponent and well maybe they're not going to a tally sure okay sure play the tap land pass the turn chill with the siphon insights C double to copy the reflection. Oh, so that lets them do like combo-y things? Yeah, I guess we counter it. 
Show us that Italia bone it. There's no way they didn't take the Itali. There's no way. All right, there's the Itali. Oh, opponent. Siphon Insight. Breach the multiverse. Pretty good. All right, steals our Chandra. Mills a bunch of cards. Takes another Chandra. Mills some cards, draws a card. Let's see how good Breach the Multiverse is. Gets in for two. I mean, we are gonna have to get pretty lucky to win from here, I think. Opponent ticks down Chandra and whiffs. All right, here goes nothing. Uh, land, Breach the Multiverse. Mill some cards. We want Chandra to resolve first. I guess it doesn't matter. Take a tally. Take a Chandra. Ah, oh, come on, a tally. Be good. Be good. Well, okay, that's something. Uh, go for the throw. Kill a tally. She old red. Copy. Kill reflection. Chandra. Hit the Chandra. Hit the Jace. Pass the turn. It seems like our opponent's trying to do something similar to what we're trying to do, but they're missing the, the key piece to the puzzle, which is C-double. Wow, Chandra with the whiff. About it. All right, gonna kill the Itali, gonna kill the Shieldred. And we draw a land. Oh, now we gotta think. How many breaches? One, three. So breaches are all gone. I think we start with a big score. Discarding a Dark Souls Shores. Double it up with Chandra. Double it with Chandra. So we're only gonna get one big score. So big score, draw some cards. C double is a good one. That is a good one. Play a land. One, two, three, four, five, six. Take up Chandra for mana. Play Blood Tithe Harvester. Pass the turn. Ooh, okay, this is this is it. This is the game. It is all coming down to this. Opponent untaps. <clears throat> Opponent cycles a Xander's Lounge. Sure. Opponent untaps. Taking up Chandra. Here they go. There's a breach of the multiverse. It gets copied. So we let the first one resolve. How do we make our opponent draw a card is the question. The problem is we go first. So we're gonna be the one that draws with an empty library. We need our opponent to put like some card draw effect on the stack. I don't think there's a card that does it. I don't think it exists. Opponent takes a Shieldred, gets a new Chandra. Opponent says, good game. Do we have any counters left? Is there anything in the graveyards? We can't activate the Jace. Well, okay, so we'll see double. Opponent is... Copy Shieldred. Very obnoxious about it. Yeah, I don't think there's any way this matters. Yeah, I think we, we just mill out for it. Boy, our opponent is very obnoxious with those emotes. Praise the magic gods for the mute emote. But we're the one that, yeah, that's why, that's why we need the combo to, that's why we need to be the one resolving stuff, because uh, it is possible to get milled out. That's the, that's the plan. That wasn't nearly as cool as our, as our kill, though, I will say. Kind of the boring version. No C-double. No, C-double's a card that makes the deck cool, opponent. Come on now. Where's your, where's your stack shenanigans about it? Yeah, I mean, I guess that's, that's about it. Well, all right, we'll keep this. Sand's not bad. We got a C double. We got a duress for protection. We got the breach. It could, it could come together. I think we just start on the duress, probably. Dark Slick Shores, duress you. Chandra, Chandra, make disappear. Well, we'll take a make disappear. Uh, boo. So opponent's hand's not very swift. Plays a land. Well, we will play a land. Tap land. Well, land and... Fable of the Mia Breaker. Probably have to just run out this Corpse Appraiser, I assume, just to have a blocker. Or not. I think we're just gonna keep it. Play the land, go to combat, get in, make a treasure. Treasure is pretty relevant here. So now our dream world is our opponent eventually goes to play a Chandra and we C-double it. Opponent, land, Fable of the Mia Breaker. 
I think we do this. Yeah, let's just see double the fable. And this should give us enough mana that we can do something big this turn. Um, so do some looting, discard a tally, draw a big score, flip the saga, go to combat, attack, trigger, trigger. And I think it's time to have a bit of fun. Uh, opponent down to 16, breach the multiverse. What do we find? Well, we get an Itali from our graveyard. Hit us who we can carry from our opponents. That's, that's good, that's good. Oh, we can stack it? Oh, that's kind of cute. Okay. Big score, land. Get rid of the land. Itali gives us a big score. Itali gives us invasion of Amica. So big score, discard the tap land. Invasion of Amica. Mill you. Yeah, I think we're we're a bit ahead. Just a just a smidge. <laughs> just a little bit. Yeah, opponent's gonna need something pretty spectacular. We draw land. Lands and blood ties. Play the tap land. I mean, your go, opponent. <laughs> Let's see what you can do. Opponent. They don't have enough mana to do anything too huge. Like, even if they ramp, they can ramp into Chandra, but I don't even think that's enough. So I think we're just good. Like, I think that big, that uh, Breach the Multiverse is gonna be enough. The power, I'm telling you, C-double. C-double. That card is, the card's the truth. It's, <laughs> to steal a, a janky word from Grimm, it is the truth. Seriously, though, Sea Devil is like really good. Going to do some corpse appraising. <sighs> I'm very tempted to hit good game after our opponent spam good game last time, but can't can't stoop to their level. What do you got? Opponent. Goes attacking. We will block. I mean, I guess we could flip Invasion Amicat too. Does our opponent actually have a something that can get them out of this? I guess, so if they kill a Tally, if they kill a Tally, I guess they're just not straight up dead. It's not great, because we still get to like flip Invasion of Amicat if we want to, but I guess they would stay alive, technically. Breach the Multiverse looks janky, but my God, is it hard to lose once you resolve that card. Once you, once you cast it. Wow, okay, Fable the Mirror Breaker, sure. That is a good magic card. Opponent passes. We get some treasures. Oh, I guess we just win, don't we? All right. Play a Chandra. Okay. Good game to you, opponent. Go to combat, swing, and we've reached them. Game three, not as spectacular as game one. Game two, we don't talk about that one. But game one, wow, was that a cool game. And I mean, I guess like all these games are pretty cool. You just do some really huge stuff, like huge, ridiculous stuff. Uh, Chandra is ridiculous, breach the multiverse. Yeah, it's so funny. And maybe I'm off base here, but remember with Companions, there was a lot of conversations about like, oh, is Wizards trying to make standard like Commander? Who knows, maybe, probably. But you know how you make standard like Commander? It's making a format where these big Timmy cards do cool things, like Italis, Chandra doubling up spells. This felt like a, kind of like a Commander game. I know there's some, you know, you know, cheap removal in here, or whatever, Blood Tithe Harvesters in here, sea doubles, big scores, trying to ramp up to like 10 mana or whatever to do like absurd things. Feels kind of like a commander game, so maybe that's the way to make standard appeal to the commander players. Not companions that like, you know, put commanders in the companion zone, but just like these big, huge Timmy bombs that do absurd stuff. So yeah, that was sweet, sweet, sweet. So what do we learn this week about Breach the Multiverse in Standard? And record-wise, 50% match win percentage overall, which eh, for and against the odds deck is perfectly fine. More importantly, we got to see some ridiculous Breach the Multiverse turns. Yes, there's some games where Breach end up being pretty fair and we just like cast it and reanimate a couple things and that's pretty strong on its own. But we also got to see those ridiculous stack games where we get our Chandra going in the breach and we're like copying the breach on the stack with C doubles and spinning through our deck and our opponent's deck with the tallies and literally just milling our opponent's entire deck on the spot and winning the game. So we got to see those super spectacular turns as well. I will say 
like as far as this deck being actually competitive it's got kind of two problems problem number one is we do get run over by aggro sometimes like our curve is super high we saw some games where our hand was like three breach the multiverses three italies and we have like four lands and we're just like oh no like we're just doing nothing this game so we can be aggro sometimes but if we get a slow hand against aggro we do get run over the other thing that can be tough is like drago control which isn't very popular in standard but every once in a while you run into a crim player who's just like going drago and playing 12 counter spells and in those matchups yeah we can like get duress from our sideboard or negate to try to fight our opponent's counters but in reality they usually just counter our breach and we do nothing on the other hand in mid-range matchups like against grixis or other decks like that rakdos just these mid-range piles our deck goes so over the top and does such spectacular things that it almost doesn't really matter what our opponent's doing we're just going to do something way bigger and way flashier and way more spectacular so anyway that is breach the multiverse combo for standard that's been her against the odds for this week thanks for watching everyone i hope you enjoyed it and i will talk to you soon